Assalamu alaikum. I am Aisha Khan, an ambitious, open-minded and proud Muslim woman. Looking back at the Islamic history, it will not be hard to find women who are innovative, leaders or entrepreneurs. It is said that the property of Lady Khadija, the Prophet wasallam's first wife, financed Islam in its infancy. Islam then elevated the position of women in so many ways. Join me as I set out to go on dates with Muslim women from all walks of life to find out who they are, what they do and what role Islam plays in their lives. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Meet and Greet show. Did you know three teaspoons of blood can save the life of a premature baby? Well, now you know. Today I am at the Interfaith Blood Donation Drive to meet and greet with a community enthusiast and the highest female blood donor in Kenya. She goes by the name Aisha Dafala. Aisha Dafala, at the age of 57, has overally donated blood 64 times. In 2016, Aisha was declared the highest female blood donor in Kenya during the World Blood Donor Day celebrations in Nairobi. What made me come donate today is because we've had news around that the blood bank is running low. So I thought someone might need blood urgently and probably the bank doesn't have that type because I am A negative and it's a bit hard to get that type of blood because you only get it from O negative and A negative. So I thought why not put a smile on someone's face? Why not save a life? For me, when you donate blood, I don't want to know who it helps as long as it helps humanity. Remember, our beliefs might be different but our morals are the same. And I'm finally here with our very own Aisha Dafala. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. It's a pleasure to have an older Aisha sitting next to me. Who is Aisha? Aisha, I'm a female highest blood donor in Kenya. So far, I've donated 65 times today. And this is my, it's my own initiative to do a blood campaign because people are losing life because of loss of blood. How is your life growing up? Ever since you were a child, where were you born? How was your life with your parents? When I was born, I was uh, 11th in the family. Wow. And uh, I, was, uh, I was named after my father's mother. When I was growing, I was uh, like, what do you, where do you want us to go? What do you want us to do? And uh, when uh, we have a visit at home, when he was leaving, my father was giving me money to just uh, to give as a bus fare or something. So I've grown up like that. So my father taught me about giving. Yes, I've grown giving because my father taught me. Amazing. Now tell me the story of when you first donated blood. How did it happen? Okay, I first donated when I was 17 years, I was in Form 3. Okay. And uh, when I donated, I lost conscious for like 10 minutes. So when I woke up, my parents were there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they took me to the hospital because uh, what was wrong. But uh, since I had donated, the doctor had to check my HB and it was 11.8, so it was normal. So it was just that uh, maybe the excitement or what? Yeah. The so, anxiety. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was in 1981. Then I stopped because there was okay. some scolding with, from my parents. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I, I donated, I was given uh, a Fanta and bread. So that Though was I motivation for But you. I didn't. In fact, when I donated, I fainted. So I did, even I didn't take the bread. Okay. But when my parents came, when I woke up, they asked me, what do you want to eat? I said, uh, chips and chicken. So yeah. they went abroad. <laughs> so when we were going home, yeah. so my mother was telling me, you could have said if you want chips and chicken, why did you go uh, to, to donate? To donate? So the, uh, the scolding, I, I stopped. But in 1986, I have a good friend, a colleague. She's called Leah. Right now she's working with the Kenya Wildlife Services in Nakuru. Uh, her brother has gotten an accident and uh, he wanted the blood. Mm -hmm. 
So Leah came to my office and asked me to go to, he was in Mata Hospital. Mm -hmm. So first when we reached Mata, she took me to the ICU where the brother was. After that I went and uh, been tested and uh, I donated. So ever since when I remember, mm -hmm. that makes me go and uh, donate. Yes. So I've been donating thrice a year. You know, as for a woman, when you are pregnant or when you are breastfeeding or when you are in a menses, you cannot donate. Mm -hmm. So I break when. But if I'm due, I normally donate. Okay, so what are the conditions put in place for donating blood, the do's and the don'ts? No, you see, when you want to donate, there is a form, there is a questionnaire you have to fill. So there are some questions. So sometimes you are disqualified because if you are on uh, drugs, if you have a, a, a certain illness, you cannot donate. So there are some guidelines. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what have you done all these years? You know, today was your 65th time to donate blood. What have you been doing to be so strong? What kinds of food do you eat? Now let me show you. This. Let me show you something. Yeah. When we were growing, there is a day you'll wake up. And uh, our mother will tell us, today there is no tea. You have to take porridge. So at least twice, thrice a, a, a week, you have to take porridge. So I've been living like that. And you know porridge is very, is, uh, very healthy. Healthy, yes. So I believe that uh, my mother has made me what I'm, I am today mm -hmm. because of the way we've been living. Whatever food uh, she decides to cook, she cooks and you have to eat. If you don't eat, You'll have to eat one day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, now Aisha, looking at the youth and the situation today, you know, and also at our country, the blood levels are very low. And every day you find that there is an appeal going around. And most of the youth, they are very afraid to donate blood. Why is that so? Is it a painful process? It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not at all. Because it's just a needle. You know, you, there is no way you can bring out the blood from the body without a needle. So if somebody is willing and really wants to assist somebody who requires blood, he has to face the, in, the, the needle. Yeah. How long is the process? 10 to 15 minutes, yes. Just 10 to 15 yeah, minutes? Yeah, 10 to 15 minutes, the pack is full. Wow. Yes. What are the misconceptions and the myths that go around women donating blood? What are the, some of the things that you hear? Now what I can share with you, when I started donating blood, I did it as my personal. Nobody was knowing that I was donating. Because when I started donating for the second time, when I donated the seventh time, I was given the certificate by the Kenya National Blood Transfusion. And that's when I shared with my father. So my father told me, you mean you've been donating till seventh time? I say yes. Okay. He told me, okay, you have my blessings. So me, I've been doing it on my personal, confidential. But in 2016, when I was uh, awarded by the World Health Organization mm -hmm. as the highest female donor, it's when people knew. But uh, I thank God I didn't share because people could have discouraged me because after 2016, people were telling me, you are donating blood, do you get money? Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, why should I be paid to donate? Mm -hmm. And also we have that you know, a woman is not supposed to donate, a woman is weak. So is that true? It's not true. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm 57 now. Wow. Yes. And I'm supposed to stop when I reach 70, uh, 70 times. So I have five times to donate. Yes. So Aisha, what are the benefits of donating blood? They say that uh, when you donate, you have, uh, there's uh, always the circulation of new blood in you. And uh, me, as uh, you know, we, uh, we have that, uh, it's called ijama. Yes, the capping. Uh, yes, the capping. I don't do it. So I feel my best way to do the ijama is through donating, of which I'm used because I know even my blood is assisting somebody somewhere. What does blood donation mean to you? It's, uh, it's heaven to me. Because uh, I didn't know, I didn't know I'm doing a noble job. Uh, let me share with you something. 2013, 
I was at the balcony in Kenyatta National Hospital. I had lost a relative. So we were waiting for the body to be released. Taken, yes, released. So when I was at the balcony, uh, there was a child, uh, a boy, 12-year-old boy. He held my, uh, my clothes. So, okay, uh, assalamu alaikum. Uh, okay, who are you? I'm Muhammad. Okay, what is it? So the father came. Yeah. So the father told me he had come from Mombasa. They have been referred here in Kenyatta National Hospital because the boy, the boy is uh, having severe anemic. And there was a product from the blood which he was supposed to be put. And they had stayed for two weeks without getting that. So when he told me that, I just went in my handbag, got my card, my donation card, and I gave him. I told him, go to the National Blood Transfusion, tell them, I've sent you. And by the evening, the boy was given. For two days then he was discharged. So I was saying, just my question, do you need to be assisted because you are known? You can imagine. So I say, whoever is, who is not known, what are they going through? So now, Aisha, how do we inculcate this culture whereby today you're 57, very soon, after five times you're off the market, yes. you have to relax. Yes. Now, does that mean that we will stop at that? How do we now nurture this into our young people to start donating blood? Now, uh, today we've started the interface. We need to do a lot of awareness and uh, campaign on blood donation. You've seen we have students from uh, Tangaza University, Kenyatta University, St. Paul's University. So we want to nurture young people to, to start donating blood and make it a, a culture, a lifestyle of donating. And you see when somebody, as you've seen, like a whole month we've been having this problem that there's no blood, there's no blood. Yeah. So when they donate and see that uh, at least we've improved, I think they'll make it a, a culture. Yes. Now Aisha, looking at statistics, you know, last year, Ken the Kenya as the government, we were looking for blood, one million units. And after they did the blood drives and everything, they managed to get over 100 units only. 164. Exactly, 164 units. Now, is there a problem? Because, you know, there are blood appeals every day that you see, and sometimes hospitals even charge you for you to get the blood. You see, when, when you donate the blood, for it to be saved till to be given to a patient, the Ministry of Health, they use like 14,000 to, to make sure that the blood is safe to, give, to be given to a patient. And last year it happened, I was invited in Rwanda on the World Health, uh, World Donor Day. Yeah. And uh, surprisingly, in Rwanda, blood is on shelf waiting for patients. Wow. But here in Kenya, patients are waiting for blood. Sad story. It's so sad. In fact, when I was there, I was so much uh, touched because I, saw, I, I asked myself, when will we reach there? And uh, I, I, I met the highest female donor, whom uh, we discussed, and he told me he was coming to Kenya. He told me he'll come to Kenya this year. It was in June. But surprisingly, he, he, through the papers and the TVs, he saw that Kenya people are, are dying. And he made an effort. He came in September, okay. and he donated blood here. So as we speak, Kenya does not have a proper blood bank system. That I can't know. There's a problem. There's a problem, yes. Now just tapping into the Muslim community, what do you think Muslims as a whole can do to change the situation? Now, uh, surprisingly, you see, today we have an inter, we had an interface. Inter yes. I think we had like how many Muslim who donated? very few so i don't know it's a mentality they have or what but maybe we'll find out and see how we can tackle that so before we take the short break what message do you have to tell people out there in regards to blood donation uh, I'd like as a to human urge, being i'd like to urge each individual 
to make it a lifestyle and donate blood. And you see, when you donate blood, it also you have discipline in your own because you'll eat well. And uh, you, if you want to enter yourself into a relation, you'll, you'll have a, a second mind to think whom you're engaging yourself to because you'll know that I need to donate and save a life somewhere. Thank you so much. We'll be taking a short break and we will be right back. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the show. Now today we have a very very important person with us here, the highest female donor in Kenya goes by the name Aisha Dafala. In the first segment we spoke about her journey and why she loves donating blood and right now we'll be looking into her community work. Aisha welcome back again. Thank you. You're a community enthusiast, you know, very involved. Tell us about some of your projects. Yes, I work with the community and uh, I have an organization called United Muslim Women for Development. I normally deal with elder persons. Mm -hmm. Elder persons, they, we have uh, uh, parents who are being neglected by their children. And uh, we normally take care of them. Like in Kibera, we have a day, day care with them. And some of them, they are bedridden. So no, we normally do house visits. Okay. Yes. So what is the cause of this neglection? Because our religion teaches us that we need to take care of our parents. So what happens that they are left? No, it's just the moral values. And uh, we fail as a community. And uh, also the children. The children, they don't, uh, they feel that uh, they are not, the par their parents is not responsible. When somebody is married with the children, it's just leave the father. Uh, I can share with you something in uh, Omwani. Mm -hmm. There's a time we held another old man. And uh, normally I used to treat my older people in uh, Afwan Hospital. Now it's called care. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Ali used to treat the patients. So one day I took the, he's called uh, Muhammad, and uh, he had wounds, both legs. So he was tested and he had very high infection and he has to be injected. So Dr. Ali told me he would inject the, the old man for three days. But when he injected him, the wounds were not drying. He decided to, 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 to do the injection for seven days. After that, he was anemic. So he was to be admitted in Baghazi for, in, for transfusion of blood. So she, he has a daughter, she's called Mariam. We called her, we told her that uh, if this old man goes to the hospital, it will be a challenge. So we'd rather take care of him at home rather than taking her, him to Mbagadi. So when I called her, she said, okay, we meet tomorrow. So 10 minutes after the meeting time, the phone was off. So we decided to take care with, I have my sister, she's called Zahra. Mm -hmm. We took care of the old man. And uh, the wounds were dry and he was good. But it was in February, but in September he passed on. So we tried to call the daughter again, and the daughter is 50 years plus. We tried and called her. She never responded, she switched off the phone. So the, man, the old man died around the midday, it was on a Friday, I remember. So we decided to bury him as an Islamic uh, law. And we had uh, talked with the administration, the chief had known the case, even they had, call, they had called the daughter. We buried him, then around seven, when the lady switched on her phone, we had sent her the message. So she told us, I'm coming to, to, to collect my father. So we told her, come, but we are already buried. So you see, when somebody is alive, they don't want. When somebody is dead, they all want to celebrate the, uh, that person. Uh, I I can share with you also in uh, even other religions. We normally tell, because we don't select, we just take them. So we, we take care of them. But when they die, they come with big vehicles. The relatives. The relatives, and they take them. So uh, I I don't know exactly what is wrong because. 
uh, also the, the children have failed because they don't take care of their parents. No. And Aisha, what made you particularly focus on the elderly people? Is there any oh. specific reason? How did it happen that you decided these are the people that I want to focus on? My father used to take care of uh, elder people within the family or outside also. I remember I used to take care of his uncle, the brother to the mother. Yes, and several. So having grown, seeing that, I think that is what motivated me. Now in all this community work, how supportive is the Muslim community? Mm, I can't say, because me, I normally deal with well-wishers. I can't say I'm supported by a Muslim or what, but they're just all wishers. You also have a project in Kilifi, I understand. Tell me a little bit about that. Kilifi, I, I decided to go and do a project in Kilifi for elder person because we had a case that elder person are being killed in Kilifi and they are called witchcraft. But when you go and see deeply, it's, it's not witchcraft. It's the children, they want the wealth of the parents. So they decide, even we have the boys who are hired to kill, then they take out the wealth. Yes. So I've gotten a, a, a donor who will be who will build for me a rescue center for the elderly. And also I do, uh, I concentrate on girls, the ones who have gone through culture, there's early marriages, FGM, early pregnancy. So also sometimes with this elder person, sometimes you find out their children have died and they've left them with their grandchildren. So they come in there. So normally we support them with uh, scholarships, sometimes we got scholarships and now you see we have a lot of bursaries, both CDF, MCA, also the president. So normally we see how we support them through that. Amazing. Now Aisha, how do you balance being a mother, at the same time a community person? How do you strike a balance? How do you give your children attention at the same time the community attention? Now you see, I started this job 2000 and. Uh, and uh, my child, my children now they are big. Uh, my last one is in form four, so I have all the time. Yes. And how do they see you, you know, as their mother, having donated now 65 times? Have you impacted this on them? Yes, I have my son. Okay. He's uh, 24 now, and uh, even his his last donation he donated on Valentine's Day or 10th, 10th mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And uh, how he got ins inspired, one day I was, uh, I w my day of donation was due, and uh, I asked him, like, just take me somewhere. So I went, it was in Mombasa. So I went there and donated. But while I was there, there was a lady who was really in need of blood because the mother was supposed to go for an operation. Me, I didn't talk to my son anything. I just donated. No discussion, and I went home. So he just decided to go by his own to start donating. Yes. Wow, that's amazing. Asha, what do you like doing for fun? Traveling. Traveling. Where have you traveled to? I've gone to Mauritius, Seychelles, wow, so Rwanda. Wow, international. Yes. Amazing. Asha, what role has the government played? in helping the elderly Yes, people. the government has been uh, giving elder persons uh, some amount of money every month. Don't, normally they don't give uh, every month, they give them in a lump sum, like four months or five months. Yes, and also they said they'll have the, they'll cover them through NHIF, of which I think the implementation is underway. Yes, at least the government is trying. Mm -hmm. But you see also, Sometimes those elder people, when they get the money, they have their grandchildren when they take. In the, 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 the grandchildren also they take from them, even they don't benefit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. What role has Islam played in your life to being the woman that you are today? I thank Sukkim 
I got an opportunity, there is a project we are starting on gender-based violence in Kiambu County. Yes. Okay, so Aisha, what is your final message to people out there? I'm saying that if you want to do something, mm -hmm. do at your best. And in this, uh, the life you are living, you don't know of what, of what will happen tomorrow. Because maybe I'll need you, you'll need me. So try and do something which you'll be remembered one day, that Aisha did this. Yes. For sure. Thank you so much. And may Allah keep blessing you and open your doors. And may we all be inspired out there to keep helping our community. Inshallah. Amen. It is all about humanity, looking at the gaps in society, just like Aisha Dafala. The elderly have been neglected. Blood is less and she has always come in to leave a legacy. What are me and you doing to change the world? Well, I've been your host Aisha Khan and this has been the Meet and Greet Show. Alhamdulillah, 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 all thanks is to Allah.